conscious sitting down. <laughs> There's a species that has developed out of Homo sapiens, a branch species called Homo touristicus. <laughs> And they they walk around continuously with either camera or things or thing. You see them every day, they come in buses. <laughs> now a strange thing is happening right now, the internet is down. Which means those of you who are joining us from elsewhere will be watching this in the future. <laughs> oh, I f no, I forgot the future doesn't exist. <laughs> so you'll be watching it in the present. Now, when you're not, did you disappear when you're not thinking? When you're not remembering your problems, when you're not remembering whether your life is a big success or a big failure, to, do, to take two extremes. If, if you think your life is a big success, uh, you're in a state of temporary delusion. <laughs> and just wait a little. A few times, abdominal, a few abdominal breaths, and you are in the body <clears throat> and out of your mind, in a good sense. <laughs> You're out of your mind. Thank you, I am. <laughs> Who am I? Because that also, when you ask yourself, Who am I? Consciousness awakening. At first, it's painful, and then and, and it says, "What am I doing here? Not another incarnation." <laughs> I don't go into. I don't advise you to do it either. Saying, "I have no conceptual identity." They probably won't let you in. We don't want people who have no conceptual identity. No. Technology is very difficult. But then suddenly you realize you're, you're nobody. Any beyond your, your job description and your function that you fulfilled for, for decades, perhaps an important function, member of the board. <clears throat> and and suddenly you're not a member of the board, you're just bored. <laughs> so a lot of our knowledge is just covering up our ignorance <laughs> with words. <laughs> Entire PhDs are like that. <laughs> I'm sorry that my chair is more comfortable than yours. <laughs> and then there are other types of challenges that come at you seemingly out of nowhere. You, there could be, it could be that uh, an earthquake could happen here in, in a minute. Well, let's not manifest it. <laughs> uh, people who expect the conventional responses become confused. What, what, this is a weird person. And so she decided to stay. And a few weeks later, when I got to know her better, she explained to me that the, that first night she was in her bedroom and she said, I found you so weird that I, I thought you might creep in in the middle of the night and murder me. <laughs> And if you're not careful, you think that all the important things is what's on the, on the news, CNN or others. 
not to mention others. <laughs> I mean, they are trying to present what they think is important. It's, I understand that, and it's their livelihood, that's fine. But if that, if that deceives you and you think those things are really, are those are the things that really matter in going on in the world at this moment. And all you look at is the, the deepest manifestations of unconsciousness. <laughs> this, that should be the name for the news. <laughs> So you have the six o'clock deepest manifestations of our consciousness. <laughs> I was walking not long ago on my daily walk um, on a forest trail and a couple were coming in the opposite direction, a young man and his girlfriend, wife. And he, as they were walking past me, he stopped and said, I know you from somewhere. Where do I know you from? What's your name? I said, Eckhart. Oh, yes, YouTube. I'm watching you on YouTube all the time. And then he said to his girlfriend, he's a famous YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new identity now. <laughs> and now my ambition is all to, I have, perhaps I too can become an Instagram influencer. <laughs> all I need is wait for a different body. <clears throat> Thailand, in, are just near Bangkok. Somebody, they interviewed some uh, near Buddhist monastery. They interviewed some farmers and uh, farm workers. They would give food to the monks. That's the tradition in Buddhism in Thailand, in the South Theravada tradition of Buddhism. The monks come with their begging bowls every morning they just stand there, and then the local people come and put food. They are dependent. It's done on purpose. There's a wisdom behind it, or the Westerner would say, why don't they work for a living? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the monks stand there with their begging bones, and then the poor people who hardly have enough who hardly have enough themselves, they come and put some food, a bit of rice, whatever, in the begging bowl, and the monks just stand. They don't. They don't. They don't say thank you because it's a privilege for you to give food to the monks. That's part of the tradition. So the Westerners interviewed the farm workers. They, why do you give your food to the monks when you have so little yourself? And they, they were, they began to, to talk, talking to each other and say, well, because we went to. Uh, we want a better, in, a better incarnation next time, so we are accumulating merit. So next time we come, we are born into a better condition. And then the Westerner asked, so what do you want to come back as in your next lifetime? And then they talked amongst each other. And finally the agreement was, we want to come back as tourists. <laughs> It's a wake-up call. <laughs> <laughs>